Well, good evening, and again, welcome to the midweek Bible study. This is a time where we get to unpack some things, um, and we're still looking at the series, The Same Power, and this last installment, Powered by Light. I, um, I was motivated to kind of go through the scriptures uh, by a short story that I read from a, a it is an English periodical, uh, the SS Banner, um, and it's just a short story. And this is the crux of the story. There was uh, uh, a father who had two children, uh, a daughter who was about um, nine years old and a son who was about six years old. And he was a lighthouse keeper. And occasionally he'd have to go and uh, across the island to get provisions. And so this one time that he went, um, because there's no, no one else around, he felt okay to leave his, his children for this short while. Well, would you know it, a storm came up and he wasn't able to make it back to the lighthouse. And as evening wore on, uh, drew, drew close, the daughter said, I mean, after seeing her dad oftentimes putting the, the, the lantern, lighting the lantern in this huge reflector for the lighthouse, she said, we, we, we've, we've got to uh, get the lantern lit. We've got to get that lamp lit, she says to her little brother. And so she gets up on a chair, and she climbs up on the ladder, and she tries to reach it, and she, it's, she just can't reach it. She just, and she's, she's stretching and she's stretching and she just can't reach it. But she knows how important it is that they get the light lit, that their lamp is able to reflect the light. So she says, I know what I'll do. She runs to her room. She climbs down, runs to her room, and she gets the little lamp from her room. And she goes up. She, it's a little lamp the size that you would have for your room or for a small, for a room, and she goes up and she tries to put it there and she just can't, still she just can't do it. And so she's frustrated and, and her little brother says, I got an idea. And he says, okay, I'm gonna put the chair up there and I want you to stand on me. And so he lays across the chair and she stands on him and her little lamp goes right in the middle of that reflector and boom, let there be light. Her little lamp was enough with the reflector to shine so that the ships would not hit the rocks. Today, I want you to understand that we used to sing a song that says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You might not think that you have much of a light. You might not think that you are significant. You might think that uh, you, you may not be relevant. You, something may have happened that may make you feel marginalized. But I want you to know that no matter what you have, no matter how big your light is, it's not your light that is going to do all of the work. It is the reflector. And the reflector is the Holy Spirit that God has put in every believer. If you would take what you have, whatever gifts, whatever skill sets, whatever, uh, your, whatever your, your abilities are, whatever you can do, do it as unto the Lord. Whether it be with your hands or with your heart or with your head, do it as unto the Lord and watch that great reflector magnify what you do. And it was interesting in the story, the little boy, she looks down to her brother because she has, is holding the little, her little lamp up there and she's having to shift back and forth because her arms get tired. You ever had the pastor uh, in your church 
tell you to stretch your arm out to somebody that they're praying for, and you do that, and, and after a while, the pastor prays a little while, your arm gets a little tired, doesn't it? And you switch to the other arm. Have you ever done that? But you put that other arm up there because you know the power of prayer, right? And so she knew the power of her little lamp, and she would just switch from arm to arm. And she, she thought, well, if, if my arm is hurting, what about my brother that I'm standing on? So she, she, she looks down at him and she says, hey, are, are, are you, am, am I hurting you? Are you hurting? He said, yeah, yeah, you're hurting me. But don't stop letting your light shine, he says. Brothers and sisters, I know that in this, this is a difficult time and I'm not, this is, this, there's no theatrics. This is not theatrics. This is not for any dramatic effect. We are living in some difficult times. And I, hate, I personally have, I've, I've heard people who I love and who uh, have, have, have said to, you know, with their lives and with their testimony that they're Christians and I've heard things come out of their mouths that break and that has broken my heart. Things that have revealed their true self. And I know it's difficult. It's difficult for, for everybody. It's difficult to navigate in darkness and still hold your little light up. And tonight I wanna to just talk a little bit about why that's important and how you can do that with integrity and still keep the joy of the Lord even in the middle of these great socioeconomic uh, political, all of this cauldron of, of uh, stuff and, and, and ugliness that we have to, to navigate, that you can still do that and do it with victory and do it with integrity. Listen to this. In 1 John, the Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, him being Jesus, and walk in darkness, we lie. The Bible says that if you say that you have fellowship with Jesus and you walk in darkness, then you are a liar and you do not tell the truth. It says, but if we walk in the light as he, Jesus, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I have in the last uh, three months or so, three or four months, I've, man, I, I have found out some things even about myself that have um, uh, caused me to have to submit, resubmit my thought processes, resubmit my, uh, my, my heart uh, to the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I've had to take a bath again uh, I normally take one at least once a month, but uh, I've had to t take a spiritual bath. I've had to have my, my mind cleansed, my thought life cleansed, my heart. Because if we leave our hearts and our minds unattended, and the only way that you can truly attend and protect your heart and your mind is by submitting it to Christ. If you leave it unattended, then you are setting yourself up for a tremendous conflict. And I found 
that there were some things that I needed to square away in my own heart and in my own mind. So I want you to look at that scripture. The, the operative word is, is we. If you are with someone else right now, just say it out loud. If everybody says it, then you don't look crazy. We. The operative word is we. You see, because Jesus turns the M in me to W and makes it we. That's what true fellowship is. He says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. You see, that's what true fellowship is. True fellowship is the place where me becomes we. What we are learning here is that our relationship with fellow believers is a sort of litmus test of the authenticity of our faith. You see, because we, we come from all walks of life. We come from every corner of the earth. The Bible even says in the book of Revelations that in the last days that, that God is going to call, call the, the winds to blow from every corner of the earth to bring his children together. You see, if we cannot get along with each other, with the love of God in our hearts, how dare we point our finger at anybody else? Because we are powered by the light. We're like, you ever seen that commercial where they compare the Energizer? Well, they don't use the Energizer Bunny now. They're using the Energizer robot. I saw these robots doing the whatever that thing is. And they had them, don't, don't, somebody's telling me, don't do that, don't do that. But they, they have the robots, comp and, and the robots are doing that thing, and, and one robot slows down. And, but the other robot just keeps going and going because that other robot is powered by the, the battery that they want you to buy. Well, I'm telling you that you're that, you're that, you're that, you're powered by the light. You're powered by uh, an unquenchable, unstoppable force. And our relationship with one another is, 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 is a test of authenticity. You can say all day, you can talk about how you feel, but we're going to see that having affection for someone is different than doing what real affection drives you to do, powers you or empowers you to do. When we walk in the light the way Jesus walked, our capacity and desire to love our brothers and sisters will become increasingly apparent. I mean, no one has a, has a ask. No one would have to ask. When you see the love of God in a heart, in a life, I don't care if the person is 12 or 20 or 60 or 80 or 30 or 40, it doesn't matter. Love looks the same. Love looks the same. Love is uh, from a two-year-old to a 12-year-old, to a 20-year-old, to a 40-year-old. Love looks the same. It looks the same in me, whether I'm a male or a female. It looks the same in you, whether you're black or white. Love looks the same. And so we know when you're being powered by the light. It's obvious. Many in this season unfortunately, are causing great conflict for others who are watching the church. Let me tell you, people are watching us. They're watching the body of Christ. They're looking for, the, some people are looking, they're taking their cues from us. Yes! Even though they may not confess Jesus as Savior, they may, they may not, e they might not even use the general terms like I'm religious or I'm spiritual or whatever, but they are take their, wh why would they want to take cues from the church? Because we're supposed to be the purveyors of love. That's why. We're supposed to be where the, plugged in to, directly to the source. We're supposed to be powered by the light. So 
they're, take, they're looking to take their cue from us. And what are, we, what are we showing them? What are we modeling? What are we, how are we advising them? And I don't mean necessarily with our words, but with our lives, with our example. What are we showing them? Are we so caught up in our politics? Are we so caught up in our economics? Are we, we so caught up in our own philosophical uh, 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 opinions and things like that that we forget that we are supposed to be powered by the light? That, 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 that our opinions are, are, are not uh, superlative to the Word of God. That how we feel is not superlative to our faith. That what we think should be submitted to the theology of the Bible. Because it is God's mind. The Bible says, let us have the mind of Christ. That's what we're supposed to have. That's my theology. What does God say about the matter? Let God be the final court of arbitration. People are bickering back and forth about what does God say? And for us, for we who are believers, that should be the line of demarcation. That should be what draws the line. That should be what we stand on. So people are trying to, they're trying to take their cues from the church and, 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 and we're creating more conflict for them. They don't know what, some people in the church are saying this, some people in the church are saying that, some people are behaving this way, people are behaving that way, and, and we're causing conflict rather than bringing peace. And the Bible says that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons. Of God. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's our moniker, peace. As we say we are believers, the question becomes whether or not we are walking out our faith, whether or not we are living out our Christianity the way God would approve. Say, who am I to question your faith? Who am I to question your Christianity? Listen, I'm I, I, I'm not the, 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 the doorkeeper of, of heaven. That's not what I do up here. What I do is I share the word of God, the truth. I, I, I don't, whatever judgment is made, the word of God does that. We should submit our lives and what we say and do to, the, to biblical scrutiny. So, if you're walking out your faith, if you're living out your Christianity, my, the question becomes, and the question I want to bring to the center of the room this evening is, is it the way God would approve? Is this what God wants, how God wants his son to behave? Is this, what, is this how God wants his daughter to behave? Is this what God would approve of? In, in our country, in our, in our country's government, we have an agency we call the, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. We, we're, we're hearing a lot of, about what they do, and you're probably you know, getting uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot more insight recently with COVID-19 and, and, and their, uh, the, the race for the vaccine. Uh, and, and many uh, companies are, uh, are trying to submit patents and different things. And, uh, and of course, it has to be approved by the FDA. So, because before we take medicine or, or eat some, any food, prepared a, a, a new way, especially, we want to know that it is FDA approved. Even if it looks like it could work, but is it FDA approved? Because the, it could look like it worked. It could, it could have, uh, you know, uh, there could have been an anomaly or someone else, someone could be predisposed to, to healing 
uh, or, or having, uh, being immune to something. And, 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 and it didn't go through the trials and the different tests that the FDA runs or requires, I should say. So what, was it approved by the FDA, even though it looked like it could work? Or it has tremendous possibility. I, I'm telling you, I've jumped the gun so many times in my life because something looked, it had the possibility, <laughs> only to be disappointed. And I only had myself to blame. Or I heard, man, I heard he said it was going to work, and she said it worked, and, and he said all of these anecdotal stories of it being effective. But has it met the scrutiny of the ultimate authority? And it is the same way with our lives. Have our lives, have, have, has the way that we are responding in crisis, the way that we are responding in darkness, the way that we are responding to challenges, does it meet with the authority, the ultimate authority? Because we are, we, we, we have this, these, this, response, this awesome responsibility, and we have a, uh, a relationship with Jesus where people began, if we're not careful, careful, to associate him with what we do and what we say. And if what we do and what we say is not met with the checks and balances of Scripture, then they don't get a really clear view of who Jesus is. And they don't, get, they don't even get a, 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 a clear projection of what a Christian life looks like. Our faith is and will be will continually be tried and tested. We can talk and sing about how we love God all day, but this is what God said. In John, John 13, he said this, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you love, if you have, listen, in this, I, I, I don't know, I, I write in my Bible, and I, I, so if you feel comfortable, I want you to circle this word. He says, if ye have love one to another. Circle that word to. He says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. C circle the word to. Because that word is a word of effect, not affect. E-F-F-E-C-T, not A-F-F-E-C-T. It is a word of effect. Love one to another. Now, had that said, if ye have love one for another, that would be a word of affect. This is about, so uh, affect, when we talk about affect, we're talking about feelings and stuff. When we're talking about effect, we're talking about doing something. He says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. And, and, and I, so I'm going to, this is a nettlesism. I'm going to paraphrase this thing. If you have love that you show, that you demonstrate, that you affect in your relationships with your brothers and your sisters. If you have that kind of love, they'll know that you're my disciples. Love of effect, not love of affect. Because, you know, love of affect can be confused with heartburn. It could be, I mean, it, you, you know, I feel something, 
I remember when, man, I, l- love of affect is puppy love. I remember even as a teenage, well, a preteen, my first little girlfriend that I, that I, uh, oh man, I, w- I just thought I just loved her so much. I was 12 years old and I went home from school and, and, and I, I could barely eat. Now, right now today, man, I'm, I, I don't care what I'm feeling like, I eat. I'll eat, and nothing stopped me from eating. But when I was 12 years old, and I had my first little girlfriend, man, I, could, I couldn't eat, and, and I was, oh, just, oh, just, oh. All you need to do is just put a little red nose on me and some long puppy dog ears, and you know. Puppy love. But that was affect. Because I didn't, I was just feeling stuff. I was just coming into my own. I was feeling stuff. But now, you know, I have a wife, and it's a love of effect, believe me. She don't want to know how I'm feeling. She wants to know, what are you doing? What have you done for me lately? No, I'm just kidding. I love my wife, and I'm so thankful that she's, uh, that she knows that in these last 35 years that I've, that I, uh, we've been together, that I have demonstrated that. And so she does, she's not very demanding on me, but she, she doesn't want affect. She wants effect. She wants to take a ride to, to, to get some ice cream. She wants to, she, 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 she wants a new washer and dryer, right? She wants effect. And I understand that. So that's how God wants us. He says, if you have love that is two. Did you circle that? Two. One another. Then. (laughs) Then they'll know that you're my disciples. Because everybody's running around buying Valentine's cards and, and chocolate candies and, 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 and all that stuff and, 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 and going with the season. But what about when it is not easy to love? Do you still love? That's love to one another, right? Will you write this down? The church body of Christ is revealed in the darkness and not consumed by it. One of the most salient attributes of Jesus is that he always stuck out in the darkness of his time on on this earth. When he was mistreated, when he was betrayed, when he was misunderstood, even when he was rejected by his own, his light shined brightest when the darkness intensified. You and I are living in a time when our love is constantly on trial. I'm telling you, I, I opened up by saying, by being transparent about the, the, some of the things that the brokenness that I felt. Something that happened in a, in a, in a town, in a city, not even ours, like we, we saw recently, can have a global impact and has the potential to affect on us on every level. It tries to tempt us away from the light to retreat back to the comfort of carnal thinking, which is always, listen to this, Carnal thinking is always selfish, it's sometimes sinister, and more often than not, a slippery slope. It is always selfish, sometimes sinister, and more often than not, a slippery slope. We cannot allow the current state of affairs in society to dull our shine, brothers and sisters. We have to live our lives informed and empowered by this scripture in 1 John. This is how love is made. It is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. That's it. This is how love is made complete. That in this world, we are like Jesus. Our love comes full circle. The circle is complete. 
you fully understand when you have confidence, when you can have that confidence on the day of judgment. And the only way you're going to have confidence in the way of judgment, on the day of judgment rather, is that you know that in this world you acknowledge, you accept. It's a, it's a, it's, 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 it, sometimes it feels burdensome. Burdensome. It, sometimes it's, it's a heavy load, but you don't have to carry it alone to try to love in darkness, to try to love when you're surrounded by hate, to try to have to be a purveyor of peace when chaos is all around you and craziness and to try to, 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 to uh, dispel darkness with your light. It's not always easy, but it's the right thing to do because in this world, we are like Jesus. Matthew 5 says, in the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Underline, let your light shine. Let it. It'll shine. Remember, you don't have to project it. Just hold it up to the reflector. You are powered by the real light. That's the Holy Spirit. Have you noticed a theme, my brother, a common thread in these scriptures, sister? That we are called to do the things the same way. We are called to do the same things the same way Jesus did particularly to walk out our faith and love the same way Jesus did. When we follow this example, we will live victoriously. Finally, will you write this down? The power is in the model. Jesus is our example, and you are the world's example. The power is in the model. Right where you are. I hope that that word not only challenged you, but encouraged you to be the light, to be a Christian, Christ like, to walk upright, no matter how difficult it is. And I want to give you an opportunity out there if you've never said yes to Jesus, if you'll bow your heads right now, Father. I pray that you would hear us, hear our hearts, hear the desires of those who are sincere tonight, who are calling out to you and saying, I can't do this alone. They may already be Christians and some may not and they've been consumed by hate or consumed by uh, the chaos. Whatever the case, if you're here tonight under the sound of my voice, if you would just say these words with me, not the words, but the sincerity of your heart. Father, I pray that you would forgive me. I pray that you would search my heart. Find those things that are not like you and help me to remove them in the power of the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would wash me, my mind and my heart in the blood of that was shed at Calvary. I believe Jesus died for me and his blood is cleansing and his life is the light of the world. And I welcome him into my heart now. And he is that great reflector that's going to cause my little light to shine all over the world. I accept him now in Jesus' name.